Pearson v. Post is a famous case from the early 1800s, and it's part of almost every uh, property law case book. So uh, every student who goes to law school will have to take a course in property law, and most likely they'll need to read this case. So the the case is not the easiest uh, to read, but when you boil it down, the, the ruling is, is quite simple, and so are the facts. So the ruling is, a hunter pursuing an animal does not have ownership of the animal. So the facts of the case are these. A man named Ludwig Post was fox hunting on uninhabited land in Long Island, New York. Post and his dogs were pursuing a fox. And Post was close to cornering the fox and killing it. However, the fox was intercepted and killed by Jesse Pearson. Post believing that he had ownership of the fox, took Pearson to court. Now, the trial court agreed with Post. They believed that he had ownership rights in the fox. So Post won at trial, and Pearson appealed. The case was heard by the Supreme Court of New York in 1805. And the opinion was written by Justice Daniel Tompkins. And due to the lack of statutory or case law on the issue, Tompkins turns to ancient writers and their general principles of law. So he cites maybe half a dozen ancient writers. These include Justinian, um, William Blackstone, John Locke, and several others. And after going through some of um, the theories that these writers put forward, he comes to the conclusion, or the majority of the court comes to the conclusion, that pursuit of the animal is insufficient to establish ownership of the animal. So there needs to be something more than just pursuit. A hunter must wound or ensnare the animal before he may claim any rights of ownership. The mortal wounding of such beast by one not abandoning his pursuit may, with the utmost propriety, be deemed possession of him. So also, Encompass, encompassing and securing such animals with nets and toils or otherwise intercepting them in such a manner as to deprive them of their natural liberty and render escape impossible may justly be deemed to give possession of them to those persons who, by their industry and labor, have used such means of apprehending them. Thus, Pearson's behavior, the court concludes, was uncourteous or unkind, but was productive of no injury or damage to post. Now, also included along with the majority opinion is the dissent. So the dissent was written by Justice Henry Livingston. Livingston states that the matter should have been arbitrated by other hunters. He says, this is a knotty point and should have been submitted to the arbitration of sportsmen. They would have had no difficulty in coming to a prompt and correct conclusion. 
Livingston argues that the hunter's efforts should not be ignored. But who would keep a pack of hounds? Or what gentleman, at the sound of the horn and at peep of day, would mount his steed and for hours together pursue the windings of this wily quatrupede? If, just as night came on, and his stratagems and strength were nearly exhausted, a saucy intruder who had not shared in the honors or labors of the chase were permitted to come in at the death and bear away in triumph the object of the pursuit. So Livingston believes that only a reasonable prospect of catching the animal is required to give the hunter a claim of ownership. Property in wild animals may be acquired without bodily touch or manucaption, provided the pursuer be within reach or have a reasonable prospect of taking what he has thus discovered with an intention of converting to his own use. Okay, so to, to break it down and to put the majority and the dissent uh, side by side, the majority opinion holds that pursuit alone is insufficient to give ownership right um, to wild animals. Instead, ownership requires pursuit and either the wounding of the animal or the trapping of the animal. The dissent, on the other hand, holds that ownership requires pursuit and reasonable prospect of seizing or killing the animal. 